and welcome to the Weisenheimer Report. I'm Alec Weisenheimer. Last week, both houses of Congress passed legislation to stop funding the Department of Transportation's experiment of allowing Mexican truckers complete access to American roads despite not knowing anything about the drivers, the trucks, or even inspecting the cargo. The legislation is part of this year's transportation bill. El Presidente Bush is expected to veto the bill, but it remains to be seen if there is enough guts and intelligence in Congress to override such a veto. Speaking of Congress, on November 1st, the Internet Tax Moratorium expires. Now, this means if Congress doesn't renew it, state and local governments can put taxes on your Internet access, online purchases, and additional taxes called discriminatory fees that treat online transactions differently from regular purchases so cities can punish you for buying online versus your local retailer. Some states have even proposed the taxing of email. Naturally, chaos would follow with merchants not knowing who is charging what tax and how much. Plus, consumers will also be on the hook because if they don't pay some arbitrary tax in Bufu, Nebraska, they will still be liable for it and could face fines. So if Congress fails to act, new internet taxes could spring up overnight all across the country, confusing merchant and consumer alike, raise the cost of products and internet access, complicate billing, and eventually reduce our own GDP. But come on, what are the chances that Congress would fail to act? Bank of America has raised its fee for non-customers that use its ATMs. The price hike goes from $2 to $3. That's a 50% increase for you math majors. It's believed other major banks will follow their Boeing gray suit. You may recall that ATMs were designed to be labor-saving devices which would save banks money on simple transactions. Instead, they now allow complex transactions like that jerk in front of you that does his month's worth of banking on it, pushing buttons like he's typing out a short story on how to annoy people while you stand in line patiently waiting just to get your $20 bill. Oh, wait, now the jackass is buying stamps and ordering a magazine subscription to Targ Monthly. We had planned to ask Bank of America whether the real reason was just pure greed, but we were informed that the bank would charge us a fee of $10 just to answer the question. Burger King plans to offer what they call healthier fast food items for children. Their new menu will feature chicken tenders and apples cut to resemble french fries. Rumor has it that McDonald's plans to match Burger King's move, sort of, by offering eco-conscious products like earth fries made of recycled wood chips and a line of hamburgers made from groundhogs. When asked why they chose such an unusual form of meat, a company spokesman said, it's one of the few remaining animals that doesn't have a nonprofit organization dedicated to saving it or a cute documentary on Animal Planet. And finally, there's a mystery brewing just outside of Paris. At the International Bureau of Weights and Measures, it seems that a tiny amount of a piece of metal used as a reference for one kilogram of mass is missing. Various governments have expressed their desire to help the French find it. The Germans have said they'd be happy to help look for the missing mass, but only if they can keep the kilogram weight in Germany as a symbol of European unity. The British government offered to help by installing video cameras on every street corner and every apartment and house within 30 mile radius of Paris. The Swedes and Norwegians are pitching in by raising taxes on everything measured in kilograms. The Italians will help, but only if the Vatican gets exclusive use of all Latin versions of the mass. And America plans to raise kilogram awareness by putting on a Hollywood-style love fest called Kilo Aid with Tim Robbins, Susan Sarandon, Rosie O'Donnell, and anyone they can find to help explain to them what a kilogram is. And that's all this week for the Weisenheimer Report. Until next week, I'm Alec Weisenheimer. After that, I'll be James Polk. See ya.